Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Denis Deissou from Agence France Press uh, and a participant in uh, Invit project and um, We Verify, Invit which is finishing and uh, We Verify which is starting. Um, um, thank you for the commission for inviting me from, to moderate our next session, uh, which is about how can digital technologies facilitate the detection and analysis of false information. So I understand that we are running against the clock and against the coffee break, so this looks like a bit mission impossible, but uh, we are going to be to try to go quickly. So I invite to the stage uh, Vasilis Kulovias from uh, Stockholm University and from the Core Inform uh, H2020 project. Then I invite Kalina Bancheva, a professor of uh, computational linguistics at uh, Sheffield University and scientific director of the We Verify project. I invite Naima Marshall from the Comprop project and a researcher in political sciences at Oxford University. And I invite Mike Matten from VRT, uh, computer science, uh, and uh, heading the, the European project for uh, VRT and for the Fandango project. So without delay, I'm going to ask uh, the panelists to introduce themselves and to introduce uh, the projects where they are starting, uh, starting to work or working for a few months already. Uh, so let's start by, um, I think, uh, uh, let's start by Mike. You have some slides, I think. Huh? Okay. okay, can you please bring the slides for the Fandango project. Okay, thank you very much. So my name, my name is Mike Matton. I work at uh, the innovation department of VRT. VRT is a public service broadcasting organization for the Flemish community based here in, uh, in Brussels. Uh, and within uh, the innovation team, we have an innovation team of around 30 people. Part of that team is engaging in these kind of collaborative projects in order to bring innovative technologies uh, to the operational, to the production floor. That's the mission we have as VRT Innovation. And here we are engaged in, uh, in a project on, uh, on fighting against fake news. Uh, now, fake news as such is not a new problem, of course. It has been existing for decades, misinformation campaigns, uh, economical misleading uh, articles. Uh, but actually, the rise of the digital technologies, digital platforms, social media has increased the scope of the problem. Because now with social media, people don't really need the traditional media anymore to get mass uh, audience for, for their content, if they take it in a good way. And secondly, due to this uh, digital media, the amount of content that is f circulating around the world is, has exploded in the, past, uh, in the past years. And this is what, uh, what motivates us and the other partners in the project uh, to investigate how big data technologies, big data platforms, together with artificial intelligence uh, solutions can, uh, can help us to build solutions that help journalists in the end to deal with the, this, uh, the sheer amount of information in, in a more efficient way. Uh, so the, the project activities, first of all, um, uh, we're doing research both on the user uh, perspective, so looking towards needs of, uh, of journalists, needs of professional users, and how, can, how we can bring solutions to them, as well as into the technological components, the big data components, as well as the uh, AI solutions to, uh, to develop uh, solutions that help these journalists. Uh, furthermore, uh, the projects want to inspire and get inspired, so sharing information uh, with others, talking about uh, the problems, the challenges, exchanging information, um, we certainly want to do. Uh, we're also observing, uh, looking for, uh, for in related initiatives all around uh, and see if we can set up collaborations. Um, and then finally, um, we of course also develop solutions. As Fandango is an innovation project, in the end we want solutions, innovative products that can find their way into the market. Now in terms of research, uh, there's three activities. Uh, I briefly mentioned them. First of them is, is user research. So we're doing investigations together with journalists and how they are working now, what kind of problems they are struggling with, 
and how we could serve them in a better way with novel tools, with novel technologies that help them in doing that. For that, there's three organizations in the consortium, VRT as public service broadcaster, CVO is uh, a Spanish organization uh, doing investigative journalism, and ANSA is the uh, Italian news agency. So that's one uh, activity. Second activity is uh, into the technology level. Uh, so within the project, we are building a big data platform uh, where we are collecting different sources of information, social media, news articles, open data sets, um, whatever data sources journalists use to verify information. Uh, we bring that in into a big data platform and then we attach artificial intelligence solutions who can, for instance, check uh, the source of a particular piece of information, check if an image has been tampered with those kind of technologies. And in the end, uh, we integrate them into prototypes of tools for professional users, and then we will validate uh, these prototypes of the tools again with, uh, with these professional users. And we're working against uh, three different scenarios where fake news and misinformation is, uh, is widespread at this moment. These are climate, immigration, and uh, the European context and political affairs with the upcoming elections. Uh, this is technology session. So uh, one, one technology slide on uh, what we are building. Uh, so actually what we're building exists of three layers. The middle part is actually the big data platform uh, where we combine all the information and the yellow uh, squares around it are different uh, artificial intelligence components that we integrate with that. So you see uh, social graph analysis getting insights into how social media messages spread across the internet. There is uh, visual uh, information extraction tools trying to find out if an image or a video has been tampered with and so on. So we integrate that. On top, there is the data sources. So we take in whatever data sources journalists use uh, to, to verify information, be that other news websites, be that uh, press releases, open data sets, uh, whatever they have access to. And on the bottom, actually, uh, we're trying to build user interfaces and applications for journalists to help them in their work. And we've just finished uh, some work on this user research. Uh, so we've interviewed uh, journalists at VRT, at CVO, at ANZA. Uh, and the conclusion of that research will be published soon. It's uh, four tools which journalists would like to see uh, to, uh, to improve their lives, so to say. One is a news verification tool, so where they can put in a piece of information, a quote, uh, a segment they want to check, and they find related sources, and uh, they get some assistance from the technology to help them verify a claim they are putting in. Second one is more help in uh, verification of photos and videos. Things they're doing a lot are things like reverse image search. They take an image, put it in Google, and try to see where it comes from. So uh, that kind of tools. Thirdly, uh, they want to uh, a knowledge community where they can collaborate with external organizations. Uh, we've seen a lot today that co collaboration is important. This also comes as a result from the journalists. And finally, an alert system when breaking news or breaking disinformation is, uh, is coming up, try to uh, deal with that in an efficient way. The Fandango project has decided to focus on the top two. So with that, uh, this was a brief introduction to, uh, to the project. I'm glad to, uh, to give you much more information on it if you like it. There is the contact details of the project and my own contact details on this slide. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Kalina, could you? Um, can I please check if I've got the slides that I circulated on Sunday? Doesn't look like it. Um, okay, I think I'll just use. Oh yeah, okay, great. Thank you. Um, so today I'd like to give you a brief overview of the We Verify project. Uh, and as Denise said, uh, I'm the scientific director of that. Um, the We Verify project has just started um, in December, and um, it consists of seven partners. Um, the coordinator is uh, Ontotext and um, all the other organizations are shown here on the slides, is the University of Sheffield, 
uh, Deutsche Welle, ATC, AFP, SERF, and the EU Disinfo Lab. Uh, pretty much, I think, all of the partners uh, of the project are present here, so you have the opportunity to discuss with uh, each and every single one of them, uh, including from AFP is Denis, uh, and from ATC is Nikos, who we already saw, and a number of others. Uh, we have also a, um, a booth outside uh, where you can see some of the tools that I will briefly mention today. Um, so, without further ado, um, first of all, I wanted to um, discuss a little bit about um, how can the digital technologies facilitate the detection and analysis of uh, false information, because as we just uh, heard from the Fandango project, it's happening at scale, so humans need assistance with that. Um, so to start with, um, the position that I take uh, also as a coordinator of the FIM project previously is that uh, any technological solution needs to be assistive, not replacing the humans. Um, so computers shouldn't become the arbiters of truth either. Uh, and the number, there's a number of ways in which they can make us more efficient. Um, and one of them is to, as we just heard, the need to have alerting systems, so to automatically monitor multiple social platforms. Um, and this goes beyond uh, the usual suspects of Twitter, Facebook, and Google uh, that we just heard today and YouTube, but also going more towards the fringe platforms uh, like 4chan, but also closed uh, applications like WhatsApp, which are becoming increasingly a challenge. Uh, then the second one is that uh, we need algorithms and technology to help us find a fast spreading content. The one that is a prime candidate for verification because it's taking hold and it's spreading rap rapidly. Um, then something else we touched upon just now in the previous panel is about gathering evidence about source trustworthiness. So um, yes, there are these uh, initiatives uh, from the fact checkers, but at the same time, uh, this is only about uh, sources that they have seen already. So what about if we encounter information from a different source? Um, in that case, we need to be able to gather evidence about its likely trustworthiness, what kind of content has it um, you know, distributed before and so on. So this is a, an area where technology can really help as well. So this is about gathering evidence. It's not about judging its truthfulness. That's left to the human. Um, then the other aspect is the, to help with verifying images and videos, as just mentioned, so I won't dwell on it. Um, flagging suspicious claims and, uh, and textual content, um, you know, text uh, and fake content being reused across different sites to lend it credibility and so on, or uh, actual truthful con um, content being taken out of context and quoted to change its meaning. Um, then there's about, uh, technology can also help with analyzing the targets, uh, the target recipients, so who was this message, is, uh, this, this information aimed at, um, and how widely did it spread, which communities were affected. This is really important because uh, in many ways uh, that is the main, uh, the main um, challenge, is understanding the impact that this information is having um, and quantifying that impact. Um, and then finally, um, you know, how do we efficiently debug, uh, debunk this information? What are good intervention strategies so that we're not um, just, you know, per being perceived as a nanny uh, or whatever you want to call it? Um, and then the, the other aspect where um, technology can really help is that we've got a lot of initiatives. We saw many of them today, but not all of them were here either, uh, which are about uh, debunking. So we've got a lot of content out there that's already being debunked. Um, we know a lot of false videos, uh, fake videos, fake images, and so on. Each organization has millions of those. But um, there's no one shared machine readable source for this. And that would be really helpful if there was. Um, so that's another area where I think technology can, can really help. Uh, in addition to all the areas that we already heard from the platforms like the claim review schema and so on and so forth. Um, so where does we verify come into this? Um, as I said, it's a project that has just started, but at the same time, it's a project with strong pedigree. So uh, we're bringing together tools from four different um, projects, uh, one of them, uh, and products as well. So one of them is Truly Media, which uh, Nikos just presented, so I won't dwell on it. Um, the other one is the um, plugin for uh, video and image verification from the Invid project. Uh, and you can have a demo of that and find a lot of information about it outside in the booth of WeVerify, which is also shared with Invid. 
Um, and um, then we also have um, some rumor analysis um, algorithms from the FIM project, and also um, image uh, text and um, video verification and uh, other related algorithms from the review project as well. So these are the four projects that we're bringing uh, together technology from, and we're building several, uh, we're trying to address several challenges. The first one is that um, uh, the challenges come from different modalities and across also this information spreads across different platforms. So what we want to address is to combine uh, information from fringe and main platforms together uh, and also combine evidence from text, images and videos at the same time to be able to arrive at a bigger and better um, evidence to present to the, um, to the verification uh, or to the verifier or the citizen. And then we are aiming to address the challenge of uh, debunking deep fakes and very, uh, identifying deep fakes as well. Um, then overcoming our fragmentation, which is what I mentioned before, um, the outcome of all these um, different fact-checking initiatives, how can we bring it together and make it usable by the machines so that then next time the algorithms can be better and can help easily identify information that, hap that happens to recur. Because we know that every time there's a, a flooding, for example, there are often rumors about sharks. So, you know, we've seen it many times. We don't need to do this every time and again. So what we verify is going to be developing is a blockchain-based authoritative database of already debunked fake items. Uh, and then uh, the other thing that we're aiming to do is to simplify the whole verification process and uh, cr create something which is also suitable for citizens, not just for professional verification, um, you know, professionals like uh, fact checkers or journalists. So uh, that's why there'll be two different uh, sets of tools, some aimed at citizens and some aimed at professionals. Uh, then, I already mentioned this, we want to look beyond the content, um, we want to analyze the disinformation source. Uh, it's uh, the, str the strategies that have been used to spread it and the community networks uh, that have been affected. So, um, you know, to what degree they were affected and um, how can we help debunk that. Um, and then, the final thing is that a lot of the technology that we're aiming to develop is open source and also we want to create a community around it. We're not just creating technology there, we're aiming to create a community, strong community of users, but also a community of contributors. So um, that's what uh, I wanted to, uh, to mention and we've already are building on a large community of stakeholders that have been created and are using some of these tools from the previous projects. Uh, so, without further ado, thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Kalina. Uh, may I ask you, Neymar, to please to explain what Comprop is about, as you want. Uh, I understand that uh, you are a political scientist, so a social scientist, so not very focused on technology. But we may consider, if, uh, if we consider like Spinoza, that uh, the falsity is the privation of knowledge, uh, uh, then we can consider that, um, how do you build knowledge in your uh, project uh, around the election meddling? Sure, um, so I'll keep this very short because I didn't provide any slides for this today, but um, thank you for having me. And I'm Naima Marshall, I'm a PhD candidate at the Oxford Internet Institute and also a researcher at the Computational Propaganda Project. Um, we're essentially a research initiative, initiative that's based at the University of Oxford that uses, as uh, Dennis pointed out, a combination of social science tools and techniques and methodologies as well as computer science techniques to analyze and investigate the use of automation, algorithms, and computational propaganda in pub public life. Um, since 2014, um, our team has analyzed the spread of political misinformation on social media and conducted election observatories in over 10 countries, uh, including the United States, Sweden, uh, France, Germany, Mexico, and most recently in Brazil. Um, our work has in the past included analysis of how tools such as social media bots um, are used to manipulate public uh, opinion by amplifying or even uh, repressing political content, disinformation, junk news, and um, hate speech. Um, our research, you might have um, come across it, has been cited as evidence during this year's US 
um, Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, congressional hearings, or you know, the so-called Facebook and Twitter hearings, as well as during the UK Parliament Digital Culture, Media and Sports Committee inquiry into fake news. Um, and looking ahead into the future, our efforts this year are going to focus on the upcoming Indian elections in the fall, as well as the, the EU parliamentary elections, where we will be studying platforms such as Twitter, as well as WhatsApp, which was um, raised by our colleague in the previous session. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. And I'll open it over. Thank you, Neymar. <laughs> so Vasilis, that's your turn. Thank you, and good afternoon. So um, uh, I'm part of the COINFORM project, uh, which is a project that recently started, um, um, I think last, last May, actually. And, uh, and what we're going to do within that project is actually focus on three different things, uh, where technology underlies in all of them. One of them is people, the technology itself, and then policies that we have to work with. Uh, it is a, um, a co-creation, uh, actually, call on, on, on building trustworthy information. So um, from a technological standpoint, uh, uh, we are looking, instead of actually trying to find misinformation or disinformation, uh, we're, we're try we'll try to focus on, on building uh, trustworthy sources of information. And we will use a lot of the European building blocks, for example, uh, uh, EIDAS and many of the business registries we have, and, uh, and we're going to uh, connect uh, actually the media source uh, to a registered business. And this would be one of, the, uh, one of the elements. Then we will try to associate everyone that works within. Fortunately, within most of the, of the European countries, we have uh, electronic identities and EIDAS can actually help quite a lot uh, into verifying and validating uh, uh, individuals also with information. So uh, we will try to connect uh, a lot of the journalists with, uh, uh, with actually the businesses that are associated on these particular uh, uh, news, uh, news sources and, uh, and, and try to, uh, at the end of the day, use fact checkers and uh, various other partners that are involved uh, within the project uh, to look at the uh, trustworthiness of the information uh, that, that comes out. So um, there will be other technologies that will be involved, it's a, uh, but, but all of this is sort of an agile co-creation uh, process with journalists, with citizens, and, uh, and also with, uh, uh, with government uh, that will be able to provide uh, some of this information. So the key is, is focusing on building a, uh, um, a trust mechanism, uh, as we did with a lot of the cross-border transactions that we have done in the past on, the, on many of the large-scale pilots, uh, on, um, on uh, the news outlets, at least within, within Europe. And then we can scale it. But, uh, but the battle is actually quite big and it's global, but we need to start somewhere. Uh, misinformation, and, uh, and I will move a little bit away from technology, uh, is, is something that, uh, uh, that is actually uh, hitting the heart of democracy throughout the world, and it cannot be only European, because regardless of where it happens, it affects us as well. Uh, WhatsApp, uh, someone mentioned earlier, uh, has been picking up a lot of users uh, throughout many parts of uh, uh, Spain and other parts of Europe. Well, there are 1.5 billion users per month using WhatsApp. The majority of Africa is communicating through WhatsApp, and they're getting their news from there. So when, when actually uh, elections are being affected, and, and maybe Cambridge Analytica is, is gone nowadays, uh, there are many others. There are 80 elections that will be held in 2019, and many of them will be held outside of Europe, the majority of them outside of Europe as well. So if democracy is hurt in other places, uh, we are as well. So I will uh, leave with just one statement that I like very much uh, from uh, uh, late Kofi Annan that says, uh, as technology uh, keeps progressing, 
uh, why shouldn't democracy as well? Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I have a, a little change to proposing to the program because there are some people that need to leave and we are uh, running with almost a one hour delay. So what I suggest, uh, if you agree, is that we skip for the moment the question and answers, we group the question and answers at the end of the uh, next panel, uh, so we gain a, a, qu a quarter of an hour. There is, uh, we skip, I'm sorry, also the uh, coffee break, but the coffee is not lost. The coffee, it is outside uh, the door. If you want to uh, um, silently, uh, possibly silently, go and get your coffee, while I would suggest we switch directly to the next panel, so as to gain some time on the delay that we have accumulated during the day. Um, so thank you very much, Dennis, for the, for, uh, for the contribution. Okay. You will be remaining, I guess, in the room in case there are questions for your projects that everybody, I think, had uh, paid a lot of attention to these presentations were extremely interesting. So please remain in the room. There may be questions for you later. Thank you. <laughs>